Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our live coverage on Facebook of the United States presidential election and its impacts on the market. The big news this evening is the victory of Donald Trump, the Republican candidate who has swept into power on a wave of anti-incumbent and anti-establishment sentiment. Uh, Trump's party has also captured the United States Congress, including both houses of this Congress. Before we begin to discuss the market implications of this victory, Florence, right. let's take a quick look at the actual map and see how the states broke down in the United States. What you see in front of you is a map of the United States with states colored in red, depicting those that went for and voted for Donald Trump, and those in blue depicting states that voted for Hillary Clinton. And you will also notice that there are some states that are shaded in either lighter pink or lighter blue to depict the swing states that ultimately decided the direction of the election. And what you will see is that a significant number of the swing states went for Donald Trump. A few that we'd really like to highlight are Florida with its 29 electoral college votes, a large and growing Hispanic population. Hillary Clinton had hoped to win this, but it went for Donald Trump. Another would be North Carolina, mm -hmm. again, with a population uh, of highly educated voters and a growing Hispanic population. But again, Hillary Clinton did come in, try her best, but Donald Trump and the Republicans took it. And the final three states are states in the rust belt of the United States, areas that used to be heavy in industry and have seen their industry decline over the years. Um, States there, including Ohio and Pennsylvania and Michigan, all voted for Donald Trump, responding very much to his uh, anti-trade and his, his calls for, for workers in those states uh, to recognize that perhaps things could be better under his, his administration. It takes 270 electoral college votes to win the election, and Trump passed this easily with at least 278 votes and still counting. There were about 115 million Americans who voted in this election. As of now, Trump has about a million person lead amongst those voters. So here we are. Donald Trump has control of the executive. His Republican Party has control of the United States Congress. And the question now is really, how is he going to govern? And how is he going to implement some of the plans that he has discussed? So Florence, what will be the impact on the markets? Jose, what a race this has been. Health scare, FBI investigations, alleged uh, foreign country interference, and now a very surprising outcome. So we have seen markets uh, react violently, but after a sharp knee-jerk reaction down, we did see markets rebound slightly today after Trump gave a very gracious conciliatory acceptance speech. So for example, S&P futures was down almost a low of negative uh, 5%, but then inching back up to a 1.9% drop. Now, I just want to say right now that a one-day post-election performance as, is by no means a good predictor of what markets is going to perform over the next 12 to 18 months. But we do think that there are going to be some sector implications. For example, for defence and construction, we do see those sectors benefiting from increased fiscal spending. But we do think that the actual impact on earnings may take a longer time to materialise. And then for consumer discretionary, with Trump advocating that he is going to cut taxes for American households, so more money in American household pockets and so more spending. Uh, for technology and some of the leisure and hospitality sectors, as you can see on the screen, um, the concern is that some of Trump's anti-immigration laws may, may uh, hurt their hiring practices and may raise costs. But that said, uh, we do have a positive view on technology overall. Uh, we continue to have, hold on to that view with the sense that uh, in a low-growth environment, companies continue to leverage on technology solutions to drive efficiency. And we think that's going to be positive for the sector. Absolutely. And of course, uh, it does bear reminding, uh, reminding our viewers that these projections are based upon the assumption that Trump really will implement many of the pre-election platforms and promises that he made. And of course, um, the impact on earnings will also depend on the dollar. And so, Zell, what's your thoughts on the dollar? Absolutely. Well, I think what we've seen uh, over the last couple of days, Florence, last week, for instance, when the, uh, the pre-election polls were really tightening, is we did see the dollar coming off 
uh, people around the world had a bit of fear and they were questioning whether they would want to invest in and hold dollar assets after an election in which Donald Trump was victorious. Mm -hmm. And we actually did see this today. After Trump's very unexpected victory, you saw the dollar index, which is essentially an index of the US dollar trading against its major global peers, drop significantly. However, as the day progressed, and especially after Trump's concession speech, or I'm sorry, victory speech, we saw the dollar index come back and more confidence come back into the US dollar. So in the immediate term, we've seen a quick drop, but a bit of a rebound. Over the intermediate term, we actually do feel that the US dollar will see some strength. And if you refer to the chart that you see uh, on your screens, you see somewhat of a smile curve. And that curve will really show uh, you know, where we feel the US dollar will end up. We think the US dollar will actually start to strengthen because conditions will be more akin to those on the right side of this smile curve. Greater economic growth, uh, more expansionary spending, which Trump certainly has promised. His, his uh, platform talks about spending on infrastructure, making US infrastructure world class, as he said in his acceptance speech today. So if that really does happen, we'll see a lot of spending in the US, and we could see inflation as well as growth picking up. This would likely lead the United States Federal Reserve Bank to increase rates, which would push the dollar upward. So again, the dollar's trajectory is really somewhat contingent upon what the Fed does, but we do believe that given the conditions that we think will ensue, the Fed will raise rates, and therefore, we think the dollar will strengthen Florence. Right. So like just, you've just said, um with the U.S. economy, with Trump likely to come in with a strong fiscal push, we do think there's upside uh, potential for the U.S. economy. And uh, however, over the long term, there's greater uncertainty simply because uh, there is concern that if he does you know, uh, push through more protectionism and anti-trade policies, that could hurt uh, the world trade and that could hurt the uh, global economy as well. Absolutely. And so uh, those are some uh, uncertainty out there, which explains why the markets have, um, uh, which explains why the markets have reacted the way they have today. Sure. Um, so, I, so what you're saying really is, Florence, you know, there, there are sort of forces pulling uh, the U.S. economy upwards with a boost, as well right. as perhaps downwards from some of these uh, more protectionist trade policies. That's right. Uh, for those of you who are just joining us on Facebook Live, we're covering the results of the U.S. presidential elections as well as the uh, resulting impact for the markets. Please do feel free as we speak to key in questions uh, directly into Facebook. These would, will be fed to us uh, as we go along. We'll do our best to answer your questions. We've just been talking about the potential impact on the U.S. economy. That's right. And then with the stronger fiscal push, and that could boost growth, at the same time, it could boost inflation and turn the Fed more hawkish, which is why we also have uh, that's going to impact how Treasury users are going to react. Absolutely. The screen that you see, uh, the slide that you see now on your screen, really tracks the 10 year yield on the United States 10 year Treasury. Um, and what you see here is that, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, it was a bit higher. It's come down as uh, inflation expectations were low and as economic growth in the United States was low. We do anticipate that this will pick up uh, if the Trump administration does pursue its policy of expansionary spending. And we do see the ensuing inflation and economic growth that we expect. Again, we'll see inflation, economic growth, the Fed raising rates, and you will see Treasury yields, therefore, Moving upwards, Florence. What's the impact on uh, fixed income then, so? Well, I think uh, as rates do go up, uh, fixed income prices typically go down. Now, the screen you actually see in front of you now depicts credit spreads. And in fact, this is a depiction or a reflection of the market's view and the amount of fear that is in the market. You'll see that there's a bit of a spike on the chart in front of you uh, from earlier this year. In January, we had a big market pull down. There were fears about the global economy as oil collapsed. There were also fears about China, as you saw, a pretty significant pullback uh, in the onshore market. And at that time, you saw spreads widen. Uh, the amount of yield that investors demand over the risk-free rate or over the treasury rate spiked up. Again, we could see bouts of this over the coming weeks and months if and when 
markets feel that perhaps the policies uh, of Donald Trump or of his administration may not be as market friendly, Florence. Right. Uh, but clearly today, uh, we did see yields on um, spreads increase initially, but come off, as we said, as the market became more comfortable with, uh, with the idea of a Donald Trump presidency and after his gracious uh, victory speech. Again, for those of you who are just joining us on Facebook, we're discussing the implications of the US election on the markets. And please do pose your questions by typing them directly into Facebook. So Florence, uh, here we are in Asia, in Singapore. Uh, clearly, uh, Singapore trades a lot with the emerging markets. And we are here surrounded by emerging markets. What will be the impact upon EM of a Trump victory? Right, that's a good question, Sal. When we look at EM, I think there are three factors to consider. One's the dollar, one is China, and one is trade. If you look at the US dollar, uh, you've mentioned just now that we could potentially see some strength in the US dollar that historically is negative for emerging market assets. At the same time, a stronger dollar could also cause uh, current account concerns to re-emerge, and that, is, uh, that region that's most vulnerable to that would be Latin America. Now, with regards to trade, given that Asia is a large exporter, and uh, Asia tends to export more consumer type of products versus Latin America and EMEA that um, produces or exports more commodity-based products which are less um, easy to substitute. Mm. So Asia is going to be a big loser if uh, Trump really goes ahead with his anti-trade uh, policies that slows down global trade. And sure. of course with China, if um, if uh, China, uh, if China comes under attack by um, Trump in, in a trade sense, then we might see greater volatility in the Chinese yuan, and we uh, slower Chinese growth is just going to uh, spill over and have a negative sentiment towards emerging market assets. So we do think emerging markets is vulnerable to a Trump win, but. Um, uh, Trump presidency, but that's a big if, and that if is if he continues with uh, his rhetoric, his trade rhetoric that he has uh, been s uh, spouting during his campaign. And then we need to, um, on that note, we need to just mention that, yes, while the Republicans have swept uh, con con Congress and the White House, uh, there are still within the Republican Party uh, members who are uh, against or who don't, are not supportive of some of Trump's policies, especially relating to trade, and that could temper his agenda. Absolutely. As you rightly point out, uh, the Republican Party has a very pro-trade wing, a strong pro-trade wing. That's right. Uh, and, and uh, you know, one, one would assume uh, that this wing of the Republican Party will uh, impose itself as a check on some of uh, Donald Trump's more ambitious plans in regard to renegotiating trade agreements uh, or perhaps engaging in, in, uh, in trade wars or conflicts. That's right. So, so essentially what you're saying is potentially a downside for emerging markets, but we really do have to see, Florence, uh, how many and how much and to what degree Donald Trump is able to actually implement some of these pre-election platforms and promises he's made regarding trade. That's right. I guess the jury is out on that. But again, uh, those of you who are joining us on Facebook, we're talking about the U.S. election, the results of the election, the impact on the markets. Um, we saw some immediate fear in the markets earlier today when Trump won, but since then we have seen a recovery. Um, people really perhaps thinking that a Trump administration may be more moderate, may be more pragmatic than initially feared, and basing a lot of that confidence um, on the acceptance speech that, uh, that Trump came out with earlier this afternoon. Um, so Florence, what's an investor to do? Clearly risks are heightened globally. That's right. Uh, we've seen large pull downs this year. We see a lot of global economic and political risk in the newspapers every day. A few months ago, against expectations, United Kingdom voted to leave the EU. Uh, today, against expectations, Donald Trump, um, a businessman with no political experience and clearly a, an outsider from a political elite perspective, elected president. Should investors perhaps sell some of their riskier assets and keep the cash at home? 
Well, in the short term, uh, Zell, US Treasury's gold, Japanese yen, the Swiss franc is going to benefit from this um, heightened risk aversion. But uh, yes, we do recognize the risk out there. I think today's election outcome and the outcome in July um, when the, with the EU referendum, I think in June with the EU referendum, I think it clearly reflects the growing disconnect between voters and governments. And with that, there is growing uncertainty over policies and growing uncertainty over economic outcomes that could then spill over and create volatility for markets. Mm. So we recognize that there is volatility out there However, we want to suggest that investors avoid abrupt changes to your investment strategy right now. I think you take a step back and we need to really examine, as you said, uh, Trump's policies going forward. You know, if he really cuts corporate taxes by 15 to 15 percent, that is going to be a big boost to earnings. So there is uh, some... Um, upside there which the markets and investors are right now not focused on and then the thing the fear is that they're just focusing on the fear right now just want to point out that uh, historically for single party uh, majorities um, voters have been very quick to punish them and so this could potentially keep the Trump administration on their toes and may deliver better economic and market outcomes than, uh, than what we expect okay. so we have um, from history from uh, we have learned that you know if you stay diversified uh, and stay invested with a diversified portfolio, you would have been able to weather through the Asian crisis, the tech, the tech bubble, the GFC, and the European debt crisis. Sure. And, and that chart there just clearly shows that, you know, stay diversified and stay invested over the long term. So the chart, um, ladies and gentlemen, that you see uh, on Facebook really shows you how you can grow and protect your wealth by having a well-diversified portfolio. Uh, clearly, you know, we do find ourselves in an environment replete with risks, whether they be economic, uh, whether they be political, or whether they be related to actual earnings that companies are generating. Uh, and yet, trying to time the market has really been proven time and time again to be a, a great challenge and one that mm -hmm. most people fail at. And therefore, mm -hmm. the best strategy is really to stay invested, have a well-diversified portfolio, and ride out some of the volatility. That's right. Wonderful. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of our formal presentation. And at this point, we would invite you, our viewers, to pose questions to us. Again, you can simply type them in directly into Facebook. We'll do our best to answer them for you. Thanks very much. Uh, we do have a question uh, from Joanna Yeo. And she says, the Brexit market turndown lasted all of two days. Do we expect a similar pullback in the short term? Great question, Joanna. And um, I think a couple points. One is we did speak, Florence, um, up front about the fact that there was an initial sharp drawdown. Uh, in fact, you saw market futures for the United States markets down 5 7%. Some markets in Asia down even further. But we have actually seen already somewhat of a, of a retracement. Yes, but at the same time, um, Zell, we also want to be cautious because the U.S. economy is quite different from the U.K. economy. So it's, it's much larger and its monetary policy actually drives a lot of other uh, monetary policies in other economies. So this impact that we are seeing in the U.S. and the implications of Trump, his policies on growth and inflation and the Fed um, may have slightly longer lasting implications than, mm. uh, than the Brexit. Sure. So, so in essence, uh, we do feel that, yes, there's been a quick rebound, uh, initial knee-jerk drop and rebound today. However, we, we would advise and caution uh, investors to pause and, and really um, digest as to how policies from the Trump administration really are being set. Right. Uh, perhaps what kind of a team Donald Trump assembles around him? Is it a well-seasoned team, uh, one that will take a balanced and moderate view uh, on many of these policies. So to a certain degree, the jury is still out That's right. on exact policies and the exact direction that markets will take. But we can say, just from the last few hours, that the initial panic in the market has subsided based on the market's perception that, that perhaps the Trump administration would be more um, moderate in its, in its positions. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, the next question, uh, perhaps you can take this, is from Mr. Zung. Uh, how will Trump's victory affect the Singapore economy? Um, that's a great question. Well, Singapore is uh, an ex uh, a, a economy that is uh, very exposed to trade. 
So what Trump does on the trade front is really going to affect Singapore and Singapore has its own issues that it is undergoing an economic restructuring and we have seen unemployment rising. And so we really need actually global growth to be a bit stronger in order to see uh, Singapore growth actually pick up as well. So it really again depends on trade. I see. So again, if, uh, if Donald Trump and the United States Congress implement some more, uh, some of his policies, which may perhaps be a bit more um, challenging mm -hmm. uh, on the trade front, um, Singapore could, uh, could be impacted. That's right. Absolutely. Um, please do continue to pose your questions. What about on the currency front, uh, Florence? Again, uh, you know, we do have uh, some of our customers who said, what would be the implication uh, to the Sing dollar of this current um, result from the election? And you know, are, we, are, we, are we foreseeing you know, significant depreciation on the Sing dollar uh, as a result of the victory? Or again, is it too early to tell? I think it's too early to tell. I think it's quite comforting to see that the Sing dollar has been relatively stable today, so we didn't see a sharp drop. And we do expect that to continue. Again, we're saying that the dollar view is, uh, is still quite uncertain, a bit of safe haven demand kicking in, but yet a lot of the policy uncertainty is residing in the US. So the dollar strength uh, may not shine through as much as it would in typical risk averse periods. And so that would be helpful for the Sing dollar. Sure. Um, interestingly, um, ah, a question from Mr. Derek Leong, uh, and ask, asking what opportunities are present in the short term. Um, I think you, one, one can look at that in a few ways. Uh, the first way, Mr. Leong, is just simply to see, okay, we've had a pull down, uh, we've had a drawdown, a pull back, and um, investors who have a view on how the Trump administration may in fact implement policies may be um, you know, well served to invest in alignment with those views. So to be specific, for instance, those who feel that perhaps Trump's saber rattling on trade uh, was more pre-election showmanship than we will actually see implemented after the election could take a more positive view of emerging markets and perhaps uh, you know, invest in emerging markets in anticipation of the fact that actual policies will be tempered uh, by, by other players in the United States government and, and policy arena. Right. And also mentioned earlier, we are overweight technology and we've given the reasons uh, why we're overweight technology. The other sector that we are overweight is actually financials. Now, we know that the financial sector is, uh, has undergone lots of uh, challenges, but we do think that a lot of that is priced in. The sector is uh, trading at a discount to MSCI World, almost a 30% discount. So we think a lot of the bad news is priced in. And if we do get Fed rate hikes uh, coming in next year, and slightly stronger growth because of Trump's fiscal spending, that is going to be helpful for earnings, we believe, especially for US financials. Yeah, that's a great point, Florence. Um, we do have a positive view uh, on financials uh, at Citi, and given the fact that we feel that interest rates may rise more than they previously would have under a Trump administration, um, and that under a Republican Congress, one can assume that there may be less of a uh, focus on, on regulation of the financial right. industry. This could be a, a net positive for the financial sector. So again, financial sector uh, valued attractively. Um, as interest rates rise, banks do make more money on their deposits. And we feel that a Trump administration may be positive and, and condu uh, create a conducive environment uh, for financials to outperform. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, here's another question, in, and, and it's specifically about a, um, a trade deal that was recently, uh, recently agreed, the, the, uh, the TPP, right. Trans-Pacific Partnership. Obviously, uh, both Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump came out before the election saying that they either wanted to renegotiate or not to pass the TPP at all. Um, any thoughts as to, as to what may happen? We do think that in the near term, the TPP may, may, be, it may be quite challenging for it to be ratified. And so that's our view. But the sense that when we talk about trade, we also need to recognize that um, you know, it's not just 
Asia or other countries that's going to be affected. US businesses will also get affected if there are tariffs put on, sure. on trade because a lot of, for example, a lot of the products that are assembled in China do have a lot of components and intellectual capital coming up from the US. So, you know, imposing or slapping on tariffs and making it more difficult for these companies to our countries to export is also potentially going to hurt US companies. And so I think uh, Trump will bear that in mind. Absolutely. Uh, we have some uh, questions in from Ms. Uh, Jennifer Chung. Uh, what are the implications on U.S.-China relations uh, of the, uh, the victory and election of Donald Trump and, and perhaps uh, on the Chinese economy? I guess uh, to a certain degree, Florence, uh, we, we did, uh, did discuss this. Uh, China, obviously, you know, a large uh, trading partner of the United States. Trump has uh, been relatively vocal uh, in highlighting the fact that he felt that perhaps things were imbalanced mm -hmm. uh, in the trade relationship between China. Again, the real question will be, will Trump be able to enact some of the more um, aggressive stances he has made on trade? Or will um, elements within the Republican Party and the United States um, bureaucracy serve as a check upon his, his intentions? So that is the question. I think that's very difficult to answer right now. Uh, but interestingly, outside of what's happening uh, between uh, Ch US and China relations, just looking at the Chinese economy itself, it is slowing. The government is slapping on uh, more restrictions on housing. And so it seems that um, the Chinese economy uh, could be going through a slower phase. And there could be concerns now with the, if the dollar strengthens, there also be concerns over RMB and we could see um, RMB volatility. Although right now we haven't seen capital flows at the same level that we saw earlier in January. Uh, so we're not that worried, but clearly some uh, risk to bear in mind for investors, I think. Sure. Um, the next question um, from Ms. Jessely Lim is, will this result in global fluctuations and fluctuations earlier than we expected. So um, I think what this is referring to is, is really volatility, uh, right. volatility in the markets. And um, I think what we have seen of late are uh, a greater proliferation of risks in the market, uh, geopolitical risks, which clearly have been leading to um, fluctuations in the market. Uh, again, what I would say is, despite these fluctuations, the market um, over the long term with a well-diversified portfolio will tend, to, um, will tend to serve investors well. But I think that we can expect and we can look forward to continued volatility uh, triggered um, by geopolitical issues in the future. Yeah, I don't mean to be a wet blanket here as well, but uh, with, uh, like you mentioned earlier, Italian referendum next month, in Germany, the federal elections next year, and France, the presidential elections come up. So there are potential lots of triggers out there um, to trigger market, uh, make market volatility higher. And so I think investors just uh, need to stay diversified. Sure. There's two views here. Uh, for those of you who are invested with a core portfolio for the long term, our view is that you should be well diversified uh, and keep your money in the market, not try to time the market. For those, on the other hand, who are looking for trading opportunities, frankly, volatility is your friend. And we saw, um, we saw great opportunities emerge during these volatile episodes this year. We saw this in January uh, with, uh, with oil correcting significantly. Terrific opportunities were availed to uh, investors who, who took more opportunistic positions. And we did see it immediately after Brexit as well. Um, so again, yes, we expect volatility, but this can be your friend for those looking for opportunities. Yeah, and these market movements clearly is a period for investors to, an opportunity for investors to rebalance their portfolios given how um, asset prices have moved. And so, yes, it could be an opportunity to pick up certain assets that have now become cheaper. Great. Uh, the next question we have um, speaks about, again, the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank and what our expectations are for rates. Specifically, how likely is the Fed rate hike move going forward and how will this be affected by the election of Donald Trump? Um, again, what, we, what we'd emphasize is that we do feel that the Fed uh, was planning to raise rates in December and the market had priced over an 80% chance of that That's happening. Right. 
Um, and that because of confidence in the U.S. economy, of U.S. economic growth, and of the, uh, the employment situation in the United States. Um, if Donald Trump does succeed in, in pushing through his agenda of expansionary spending, mm -hmm. we do believe that economic growth will be high, inflation will pick up, and the Fed will, in fact, continue to raise rates. That's right. Fair? Fair. Wonderful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are coming towards the end of our Facebook Live coverage of the U.S. presidential election and its impact on the markets. Uh, we thank you very much for joining us. It's been an exciting day, and uh, Donald Trump, and the Republican Party have been elected. We saw an initial market pull, pull down, but things have come back as the markets have perhaps become a bit more comfortable with the election of Trump. Any last thoughts, Florence, uh, before we sign off? Um, stay tuned. We continue to update you uh, with our market insights. Thank you very much.